In this video, we're going to be looking at approximating a definite integral. Now, let's just review just a little bit, very quickly. In our previous videos, we looked at how we can use left, right, Riemann sums, trapezoid rule, midpoint, and Simpson's rule. So, for example, in the last video, we looked at a table of values like this, where we broke the table up into, into three intervals. Here's one of the intervals. Here's the next, from 2 to 4 and the next from 4 to 6. And what we needed on each interval to get all of these estimates was a y value, a function value, which was our height of our rectangle, at the left, right, and the middle. Okay, left, right, and midpoint. So we used the 12 here on this interval for the left Riemann sum, the 14 for the right, the 13 for the midpoint. And then we do that for the first, second, and third interval. And what we do is we add up those heights, multiply by the common width, that gives us a right, left, or midpoint estimate. To get the trapezoid, we average the left and right. To get Simpsons, we multiply the midpoint by two, add the, the trapezoid estimate, and then divide by three. So we can do this as long as we can get, for however many intervals that we have, we have information about the y values at the left, right, and midpoint of the interval. As long as we do that, we can compute all of these different estimations. So, we can do that if we're given a table like this. If we're given a, a graph, we could read these y values, or at least approximately read those y values off of the graph. Or, if we're given a formula for f of x, we can use the formula to generate these values. So, at this point, you should be able to work any kind of problem like that, uh, give them a graph or a table or a formula for f of x. You should be able to um, illustrate each of these right, left, trapezoid, midpoint, or Simpson's rule as areas of rectangles, or in the case of the trapezoid and midpoint rule as areas of trapezoids. And you should also be able to compute these estimates uh, in a manner sort of similar to this example. Now, it turns out that if we have the formula, we can automate a certain amount of this with a calculator program. So here is a calculator program for a TI-84. And the way you read this particular program is you... Um, See, in this column right here, you see that what you actually enter in the program when you're programming the calculator. And so when you pull up the calculator, you're going to go to Program, and you'll start with a new calculator program. You're going to name it, I'm going to name it Integral. I already have this program in here, so I'm just going to just name it A, and I'll, I'll uh, change it later. And notice when you hit Program, Different commands, control statements come up here. There are more if you arrow down. Input, output statements. So under these two things, you'll find most of the commands that you need. Type in the command, like an if command or whatever. When you're finished with that, hit enter to go to the next line. When you quit, it automatically saves that program. Now I have the program integral already in here. So if I want to edit that existing program or see the code for it, I hit enter. And you can see here I have all the commands entered in, and uh, you can go on down to see the rest of it. Okay, so there is, uh, basically there's the whole program you just saw kind of fly by there. Okay, and the notes over here you can see the step-by-step -step what to enter in. We start with a prompt statement, A, B, and N. A is going to be our left limit, or lower limit. B is the right limit, or upper limit triangle. And for the program to work correctly, we're going to assume that A is less than B. N is going to be the number of partitions. In other words, the number of intervals, subintervals, or the number of uh, rectangles. Prompt is, uh, is found by hitting the program, then go to right arrow to I O, and then press number 2 or go down to 2 and hit enter. Okay, The comma is one key above the 7 key. So notice that in this uh, 
in these notes, I tell you what buttons to push to get this to come up. I also tell you what these things mean and how they might be used. So what we're going to do here is, the first thing we're going to figure out is what delta x is. So B minus A, in parentheses, divided by N, is going to be stored as H. H is going to represent delta x. That's the uniform width of the rectangles, of the intervals, uh, whether we consider those uh, rectangular areas or trapezoids. And the, uh, this symbol right here is actually the subtraction okay, key, not the negative key. Okay. The arrow is the store key you hit by hitting the STO button. And similarly, we go down, and let's see how this program is going to work. We're going to store 0 and M, 0 and L. So we start M and L with 0. We're going to set A, uh, store that in X. So X is set to the far left side of the interval. Then we run a for loop. Now, the way a for loop, it, it executes all this, these statements here between the, the beginning of the for loop and the, and the end of the for loop, which is uh, indicated by the end statement. So what it's going to do, it's going to let k be 1, and it's going to execute these statements. Then it's going to let k be 2 and execute these statements. And then finally, it's going to work its way up to k equals n and execute the statements, and then it's going to go on to the next statement. So k is going to be our counting variable. It's going to basically tell us which rectangle we're on or which subinterval. Okay, to get 4, you hit program and then control 4. So y1 evaluates the function y1, and y1 needs to be the function that we are integrating. And so it's going to add that to L. Remember, L starts out 0, y1 of, 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 of x, but x is a. So it's going to be the height at the far left end. Add that to L. So L is, at this point, the height the far left end. Then it's going to move over by half of an interval, which is H over 2. It's going to add that to X and store it as X. So now we've got a new X. It's going to find the height there and add it to M. So now M, at this point, is the height of the first interval. It's going to move over by another half an interval, store that X, and then start over. So now it's going to find the height at that X, which is the height of the second rectangle, if you're doing a left end point a left estimate, so it's the height at the left end, end of, the first, of the second interval. It's going to add that to whatever's already in L, which now L is going to be the sum of the first two heights. Move over a little bit, half of an interval, find the height at Y. Um, at the midpoint, add that to M, so now M has the sum of the next two heights. Move over again. It's going to go through all this, and when it's done, L is going to end up at being the, the sum of all the heights at the left end point, m is going to be the sum of all the heights at the midpoint. Then it's going to take, it's, and on x is going to be all the way at the far right end at b. It's going to find y1 now of that particular, if you just do y1 without an endpoint, it assumes it's whatever x is. And it's going to add that to l and store it at r. Now r has the sum of all the heights, but the problem is it's, that's one too many. We don't want to get rid of the first one. So it sets a. Uh, back, store it back in X, so it sets X back to A, finds the Y1 there and subtracts it from R, puts that back in R. Now, L has the sum of all the heights at the left ends, M has the sum of the, all the heights at the middle, midpoint, and R has the sum of all the heights at the right end of each interval. Now, what we need to do is we factored out the delta X, which is H, so we multiply all those three by H, and now we have the left, right, and midpoint um, areas, or uh, approximations to the integral. Take right plus left divide by 2, that's trapezoid, then take 2 times midpoint plus trapezoid divide by 3, that's Simpson's rule, and now we have all four, all five estimations. It's going to display in quotes on the screen, it'll display L, R, T, M, and S, and it'll print that exactly on the screen, and then the output will then be the actual values. Okay, and so this program then will give us some different uh, ways of estimating it. So um, here is the output that you get from a couple of different integrals with different n values. So let's see if I can demonstrate these, this one right here with the calculator. So this function x to the fifth, 
We're going to put that in as y1. So I'm just going to get out of here. And so I go to here, and I need to uh, clear out whatever I've got in there. And y1 is going to be the um, function, which was, was x to the fifth, or I think, wasn't it? Yep, x to the fifth. Okay. Okay, so there's our function. Now I can just quit out of that and go to program. And I run this program integral. And it's going to ask me for an A and a B. So I have to hit enter to run it. And I'm going to run, I'm going to, uh, A is this lower number and B is the upper. So 1 to 4 on the X's. So A is 1. B is four, and I think for this particular one I was wanting n to be ten, so I want ten rectangles. Now, let me remind you that what I call one rectangle for Simpson's rule, most books will call two. So most books would call this Simpson's twenty. I call it Simpson's ten. Okay, hit enter, and it gives you. Notice it displays. Um, I think I hit enter twice. Let me let me do that again. So there's our program. A was one, one four and ten. Four, ten, and hit enter. Okay. And notice it has, it displays on there LRTMS, and then it has the values that we get there. And those should be the same values, okay, that we saw before. So I can, uh, let me just put this screenshot here and maybe put a little border around it. And so there's our first example, and hopefully that agrees with the numbers I have typed right here in this column. And if you try to do the same program for uh, the same function but change n to 50, we get these values, all of which should be a little bit more accurate. But if you notice, it, with 10, if these are more digits accurate here than this one, which should be the case, uh, we're already accurate to two decimal places, even with which is five significant digits, just with 10 rectangles. With 50, these are probably all there. So it, it doesn't take long. Well, I'll just show you. It doesn't take long to run this thing. Uh, you saw how long it took to run with, with uh, 10 rectangles. Uh, I'll run it with 100 rectangles. And you'll notice it doesn't take uh, long at all to run this. And you're going to get this is probably accurate pretty much all the way out. Uh, probably 682.5 is probably probably the actual value. So almost every all the way out, it's accurate. Okay, and we can get that to uh, to work out relatively quickly and show all the different su uh, sums. So that might be a useful thing to put into your calculator to uh, program that in. This program would work on a TI-82, TI-83, or TI-84, just like uh, we have it here. Once again, the stuff in the left column is what you actually type in your program when you program it. The stuff in the right column is just to help you understand why it's there and how to get it there in your calculator. And then you can see how to run it, and you can check it against these numbers to make sure you've got it running correctly. But I also want to tell you that there's actually a, a variation of Simpson's rule built into the calculator that will allow you to... Uh, approximate integrals directly and it's basically built in. So let's take a look at look at that. Um, let's go to the home screen. We're on the home screen. Clear this out. Okay, so again, let's say whatever's in Y1, I can do this. I can go to math and it's number 9. I'll go down there so you can see it. Function integrate. And you hit enter and it comes up like this if you have the newer operating system. I'll show you what it looks like with the older one in a minute. So if I want to do the same integral I just did, 
which was 1 to 4, and the function was in y1. Okay, to get y1, remember that was variables, right arrow to y variables, choose number 1 function, and then choose number 1. Now I've got it in there twice, so that doesn't make sense. So I want to get rid of one of those. Okay, and this last one is always going to be dx for us. And so this will give us uh, the numerical integral, 682.5. If you remember, that's basically what we came up with before, or very close to that, what we came up with before. And so this is, ex this is basically how it looks when you do it by hand. Um, I can, instead of putting y1 here, I could actually put the formula, which in this case was x to the power 5, and that's basically how you would write the thing by hand to get that. Now, if you have an older calculator, uh, if we, I can make this look like the older calculator by going to mode and turn off the um, math print and put it on classic instead. Now, if I pull up my previous answer, entry, this is what it looks like. So it's function integrate. Again, it's math 9. But there's the, the you put the same four blanks, you just put them in this order. This is function, variable, lower limit, upper limit. So the second one's always going to be x, just like that's your, that's your dx. And then this one's going to be your function. And then this is lower and upper limits. And, of course, we'll still get the same. It's doing exactly the same thing, which is essentially Simpson's rule. So that's pretty slick. It's actually built in. To, to uh, approximate. So here I've got a couple of screenshots for doing this one. e to the x squared from 1 to 3. Here's the older operating system on the left. The newer operating system you can see on the right. So basically on the newer operating system you write it on the calculator just like it looks, which is you know preferable. On the, but on the older calculators it looks like the one on the left. It's the same, same inputs. Remember when this came up you had a box here, here, here and here, same four places you enter in here. You just got to remember the order here. So, if you need a decimal approximation for the for the definite integral, this works very nicely and it's very easy to do. Okay, if you want to actually see all of the 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 parts of the different uh, ways Simpson's rule is built up by the uh, sub. Uh, approximations, the left, right, trapezoid, midpoint, Simpson, all five of those sums you can see using this calculator program, but then you can also use the built-in program if you just need a, a decimal answer at the end. So, very nice, and it turns out that this one here, uh, it's a rather innocent looking function, but there's no way to do this with the fundamental theorem of calculus, which we'll cover a little bit, uh, just a little bit from now in our next set of videos. So here are a couple more examples. This one uses some uh, algebraic functions, an x to the fifth and ln of 2x, and we can uh, get that. This is the older syntax here. It would look just like it looks <coughs> for the newer syntax. And that turns out to be about this. And here's one that has a, an e to a power and it has a trig function in it. And that's approximately this here. So there gives you a couple of ways, both with a calculator program and with a built-in function uh, integrate numerical integration technique it's a basically Simpson's rule is built in so now you know how to use your calculator to come up with values for the definite integral at least approximations of it uh, very easily and so that's a very nice little feature that's built into our calculators